that the angels desire to look into this house today in your God. God, let your spirit, I pray, move upon us, each and every one. As we come before your throne this morning, God, in abject humility, God, to give you glory and honor and power, Jesus. Let your spirit, I pray, anoint us and unctionize us, each and every one. God, across our Sunday school today, on every age, boy and girl, may your spirit move on them. Let the hand of the Lord be upon us, each and every one today, God. For this we give you glory and honor and power, Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord God. I bless your mighty name today, Lord Jesus. We bless your name, God. We
Look at all that he did for us and how little we've given in return. We certainly got the better end of the deal. Many songs that we sing are horizontal songs. They're horizontal songs because we minister one to another through worship and the lyrics of the song. Other songs are vertical songs because we're singing to Jesus. This song is a vertical song because you're going straight to the feet of Jesus. You're going straight to the feet of Jesus Christ. And you're telling him, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you more than anything. Can anybody testify with me this morning? Not because I've been so faithful. Not because I've been so good. You've always been there for me to supply my every need. You were there when I was lonely. You were there in all my pain. Guiding my footsteps.
2, verses 14 and 15 said, We are unto God the sweet savor of Christ. Amen. To them that perish, we're the savor of death. And to them that are saved, we're the savor of life. What smells so sweet to God is our worship and our praise. It's a fragrance that goes up from the house of God right to the throne room of heaven and gets the attention of God. And that's what I want to be to the Lord today. I want Him to be all ears and all eyes in this house. When we worship Him, when we sing, when we preach, may we get the attention of heaven today, Lord.
touched Jesus and he touched you, that your life was kept the same again. Can I get a witness this morning? It's more than about God touching us. But the Bible said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Because if I touch you, if I touch him, he'll touch me. And there ain't nothing like being able to touch God all night.
services coming up this month in the month of August. That is August the 19th, Friday night, and then August the 21st, Sunday morning. August the 19th is going to be our annual covering service. That is where we merge and run our buses on Friday evening. And we have a wonderful youth service here on Friday night. That's for all ages. Welcome to come to that Friday night service. We begin at 7.30 and all of our Sunday school comes in here on a Friday night where we run on, sun, on our Friday night bus routes and then come in here and then we stay after for food and fellowship and fun. After in the ballpark on Friday evening, August the 19th, that's just about three weeks off. And then on the Sunday morning, we're coming in here for our annual covering service and we pray over every child from kindergarten to college curriculum who are returning to their places of learning in schools and we give them an anointed handkerchief to carry with them on their person and their book sacks as well and our children need the protection of God to go with them in our schools today when I was a boy the two safest places in the world were the mother's womb and the school that has all together changed in 2022. Two of the most dangerous places for our children is the mother's womb and the schoolhouse. We're going to anoint and pray over all of our children and believe God's protective power over them on, uh, that is three weeks from today, August the 21st. And it's always a wonderful service. And we're more than likely to be having uh, that service out at Revolution Square, where uh, we just held a revolution, a wonderful meeting. Those of you that are on our mailing list have just received a great letter with all the reports of the great things that happened at Revolution. And this is a national and global meeting where people come in from across the nation and the world and gather with us. And we have a tremendous time in the Holy Ghost for five days. Dates for that next year is June 28th through July the 2nd on Sunday. That'd be Independence Day week and weekend. That's going to be a wonderful time. And we say God bless you for your faithful support to the work of God because of your faithful support and giving. In spite of hyperinflation, escalating fuel prices and food prices, and the very fact that it's getting very harder for everyone to live. The Church of the Living God continues to press on, and God blesses us each and every day and makes a way for us, not only to survive, but to thrive. Because you can't outlive the Lord no matter how hard you try. Why don't you prophesy to somebody right now and tell them this is going to be your best year ever in Jesus' name. going to be your best year ever in Jesus' name. Doesn't matter what the devil said, doesn't matter what the Senate said, doesn't matter what the Congress said. What does the Word of God say? The Word of God said, He that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. For the Lord loveth a cheerful giver and hilarious giver, someone that is excited to be able to give. You can. We sincerely want to thank you for joining us in today's service here at Life Tabernacle in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It means so much to us that you have taken time to worship God with us today in our online service. As you can see, there are many people marching and giving by way of tithing and offering at this time while you are viewing this video. We encourage you to get involved in the tithe and the offering. The Bible says to give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. And when you give into the church, into our ministry, I assure you that you are sowing your seed into good ground and it is going to produce a great crop for many people, including yourself. So God richly bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you back in the service in a few moments.
spiritual soldier of the Lord. Take your swords in your hands this morning. We came to execute vengeance on hell's chief demon. While the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. In the shady green pastures, so rich and so sweet. God leads his dear children alone.
When on the sultry Levi faint, or on the thirsty mountain pan, through fertile vales and dewy meads, my weary wandering path he leads. Where peaceful rivers, soft and slow, amid the verdant landscape flow. When through the paths of death I tread, where stormy horrors overspread, my steadfast heart shall fear no ill, for thou, O Lord, art with me still. Thy patient hand shall give me aid and guide me through the dreadful shade. Though in a barren and rugged way, through devious, lonely wilds I stray, thy bounty shall my pains beguile, the lonely wilderness shall smile. God is committed to his children. Amen. He promises you that he will never leave nor forsake. Lo, I am with you always to the end. God, however, in his commitment to us, needs committed people. Amen. It is highly unlikely that God will use any man or woman, regardless of their status in society, level of income or education, or talents and abilities that he will use them if they are not committed people. It is impossible for God to use anyone in any great capacity that is not sold out to him. One of the greatest tasks that God gave to mankind in the past 6,000 years of man's history was the commission of Noah who was tasked with building an ark. It was not an easy project. 120 years. You have to be committed to a job, to be faithful to it, every day of your life for 120 years. There were no plans except for those that God had spoken to him. There were no power tools. There were no, there were no kind thank yous or pats on the back from his neighbors. Harsh and bitter criticism for the man who was building a football field and a half long shoebox in his front yard with nothing but mockery and derision from a carnal people whom God would soon drown in the great flood. You have to be committed to undertake a task of that magnitude. Amen. Moses was committed to freeing the slaves who for 430 years the cries had come up to the task. Master's evil. God said, surely I will visit them God sent Moses to go tell Pharaoh, let my people go, that they may worship me in the land that I will give unto them. Uh -huh. Moses, at 80 years of age, who argued with God for a seven-day period at the burning bush on Sinai, <laughs> he told him, I'm not eloquent in speech. I'm not the man for the task. I'm comfortable where I am. I am committed to where I am. God said, the reason that I'm using you is because you have been content. Now at 80 years of age, I'm speaking to you for the first time in your life because you're a committed man. Come on. Even when Pharaoh says, I don't know God, I'm not going to let him go. And even when the Hebrew slaves said, God, look upon you and judge you for the evil that you have brought upon us. You have made us to be 
abhorred in the eyes of Egypt. Now they're going to hate us even the more. But still the more, in spite of persecution from Pharaoh, in spite of criticism from the slaves, Moses was a committed man. And God used him greatly. Daniel was committed to obedience. It did not matter what the king's commandment was. When the king Nebuchadnezzar said no man should pray, Darius said no man should pray to any other god save the king for 30 days. It did not matter to Daniel. When Daniel was faced with a decision, it did not take him long to declare. He'd rather spend the night with lions than go one day without prayer. He opened his window eastward. You'll note that it was a law that he was breaking. You'll note that it was the ordained law, the king of Babylon, who had the power to take life and throw him into the den of lions that said you cannot pray. Brothers and sisters, God's going to find out whether or not you are committed to Him one way or the other. Amen. Even when it means you're breaking the law in order to worship God, Amen. are you committed? Yeah. Because you first and foremost have to obey God's law because it is superior to man's law. Yeah. God is going to see just how committed of an individual you are. Commitment, the word is responsibility, dedication, devotion. Nothing adds muscle to talent like responsibility. Successful individuals do not spend the majority of their time working on their weaknesses, but rather they spend the great amount of time working on their strengths. They execute brilliantly their duties because they emphasize the basics and perform them at extraordinary levels. Great winning coaches in the history of sports and major league and professional sports, they're not great winning coaches because they know how to razzle dazzle and pull rabbits out of the hat or any special tricks up their sleeve, but they execute the basics of their game and perform them at an extraordinary level better than their opponents. That's what makes them great. Responsibility and commitment lays the foundation for success. As you climb life's ladder of success, your rights will decrease because your success requires sacrifice. The Bible tells us that we are not our own, but we are bought for the price the precious blood of Jesus Christ, Almighty God. And when an individual stops blaming others for the reason that they are the way they are and take responsibility in God and trust unto them greater success in that individual's life. Responsibility and commitment leads to greater responsibility and greater commitment. A new reporter for the Ohio Examiner, the largest uh, newspaper in the state of Ohio, was to give a story on a ball game. This new reporter went out to his task as he was commissioned to cover the story of the ball game. He returned back to his office and his uh, supervisor said, where is the story? He said, I don't have a story because there was no ball game. The supervisor said, why? He said, because the stadium collapsed. He said, well, where is the story of the collapse of the stadium? He said, I didn't do that because it wasn't my job. I wasn't commissioned to even talk about that, so I returned empty-handed. But individuals, more than not, miss their opportunities for success because they're at the bus stop when their ship comes in. And there is in life, and there, there is a moment that God entrusts to each of us to greater success, but it is up to us to reach out and take those opportunities. There are four things 
things that cometh not back. The spoken word, the spear arrow, the missed opportunity, and time wasted. No matter how hard you try to get them back, you just got to wait on another opportunity in life. Amen. Responsibility leads to more opportunities. When troubled people, especially troubled young people, and people that spend many years in incarceration, when they are put out of prison and get into society, you'll find out that you become more immersed in the, in the culture of responsibility when you are consumed with helping other people. After all, you are most like Jesus Christ when you are helping others in life. Amen. Oh, pity the poor man that lives to himself because they die to themselves. And here in the 37th chapter of the book of Psalms, there are 40 verses in this psalm. There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. And this psalm is known as the ABCs or the alphabet of Almighty God. Because two verses begin with the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And as David sings the ABCs of God, he goes down here with what he feels to be the greatest and most important level of commitment uh, down to uh, the very last letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, amen. And here he says in verse number one, fret not thyself because of evil doers. Uh, amen. I know that you're guilty because I've been guilty more than once uh, of worrying myself to death uh, over people that won't do right. Uh, People that are evildoers, people that are set out to do me wrong, people that have slandered me, people that have defamed my character, people that have set out in life to try to bring me down. Anybody know what I'm preaching about this morning? But the Bible says, fret not thyself because of evildoers. There, are, there is a not family that I want each and every one of us in the church today to bring home with us at this close of the service. Number one, the Bible said in Galatians 6 and 9, Faint not, for in due season you shall reap, but you can't faint in the day of adversity. Because if the footmen have wearied you, then how shall you run and contend with the horses? Amen. But in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Isaiah 43 and 5. Fear not, for I am with thee. Why? When you want to live a life of fear and timidity and cowardice when the Lord is right there with you. Psalm 103 and 2, bless the Lord of my soul and forget not, faint not, fear not, and forget not. And here David said, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Amen. In the book of, of, of Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, the 32nd chapter. A king by the name of Sennacherib was coming across the terrain and he was destroying every nation in his way. He had destroyed every king, no matter how great their army was. And he came to the city of Jerusalem, Israel, and he speaks to the people and the inhabitants of Israel. And he said, don't you think for one second that you're any better than any other army that I've destroyed? Don't you think for one minute that you're going to withstand my wrath because I'm going to take your city and I'm going to destroy your army and you're going to be my slaves. And when that didn't do the job, he sent a man by the name of Rathsheba and said to the king, Oh king, you listen to me. You listen to me, King Hezekiah. What makes you think that your God is going to deliver you? What makes you think that you're any better than anybody else? And do you know that the people were worried and the people were afraid for their lives? And the Bible said in the book of, in the book of Isaiah chapter 37 and 14 that whenever this man sent a letter to King Hezekiah, 
Zechariah that Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and he spread that letter across the altar in the house of God. Amen. And he said, God, I want to make it clear to you today that this is your nation and we are your people and I'm not going to go around fretting myself over something that belongs to you if you in fact keep us as the apple of your eye and if you in fact never have forsaken the righteous and you never let your seed make bread and if in fact you parted the waters of the Red Sea and drowned Pharaoh's army if in fact you let David kill the lion then I know that you're going to do it for us today and the Bible said that when King Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord with that hundred thousand men spread out across the gates of Jerusalem, Israel. He said, I'm not fretting about them, but I'm going to spread this altar out with a letter from my enemy. The word is don't fret it, but you got to spread it out in the house of God. And then I'll just tell you today that we worry too much when all we need to do is bring our troubles to the house of God and spread them out before Jesus and say, Lord, And for seven months since the governor issued a lawsuit on us, when the state came down on us the next day on January the 18th, we've been fighting tooth and nail. We've been looking, amen, worried about how we're going to get this done. But it was round about Thursday night, you hear me? Amen. I got to reading this chapter in preparation to preach this morning. And I said, God, it was in my dreams that said, God, I'm turning this over to you. If this is your church and we're your people, and I'm not going to worry about it anymore, but you're going to handle this. Go up to the office and people that are evildoers will look at you. And when they find out you're from like Tabernacle Church, they put you at the back of the line somewhere. And they discriminate against you because you stood up to their king and you defied this and his edicts and you didn't fold and people's got their eyes. You and they got in for you. Not everybody. Some people respect you because you stood up for right. But the devil never forgives and the devil never forgets. Amen. And for 67 days, we've been in the Department of Health trying to get a permit to get those bathrooms built. And God said, I said, God, I will spread it out on the altar and I'm going to turn it over you tonight. And you know that next morning about 9 a.m. for no we got an email and said all clear and ready to go to work. I'll just tell you that you're fretting too much. But the first level of commitment is fret not thyself because of evil good. I wonder how many things you need to spread out on the altar today. What about your marriage trouble? What about your financial trouble? What about that bill that you can't pay? What about you can't make. What about that family problem that the devil is intensifying? If you're going to be committed, the Bible says, fret not, fret not, fret not, because of evil doing. I'm not going to worry about people that won't do right. I'm not going to worry about people that's got it in for me. I'm going to turn them over to the Lord. I can't worry about what he said or what she said or what you think or what the world thinks. Or what the devil thinks, if God be for me, who can be against me? We are more than conquerors to them which are in Christ Jesus. Fret not thyself because of evil doers. Amen. Tomorrow morning, before you get up and go to work and take your children to school, don't fret it. Just spread it out on the altar and let the Lord know. God, this is your life. These are your children. God, this is your house. You're going to take care of it. This is on you, Lord. And now this is on you, Lord. The Bible said he never sleeps and he never 
are. Don't lose your head. I'm not intending on running around like a wet hen, worrying myself to death, amen, and scratching on the door every day trying to bother God. I just know the kind of God that I serve. And I know that a little preacher without any money and a little preacher without the help of any organization with the power of the state and the head of the bar association said we're going to put you in jail and we're going to close down church, I just spread it out on the altar and said, God, if they do it, it's because you let them do it, but if they don't do it, it's because you didn't let them do it. Yeah. 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 Evil doers. Evil doers want to shut up the do gooders. Evil doers want to silence the do gooders. Evil doers. I'm telling you that there are people that do evil. They are lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. They, they worship the creature more than the creator. They've got it in for God. They've got it in for you because they stand condemned because you stand for righteousness. But that's all right. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. And if one can chase a thousand to flight, then two can chase ten. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. You 
not going to get anywhere trusting in yourself. Some trust in horses and some in chariots. But we will remember the name of the Lord. That's what you need to do when you get in trouble. You need to remember Jesus. You need to get on your knees and say, Jesus, I remember how you healed my body when I was sick. I remember how you raised my child up off of the death bed. It's not hard for me to trust in the Lord. I've been through too much with the Lord for me to not trust him. I've been through too many trials. Yes! 
dancing in the feet. There's going to be clapping in the hands. There's going to be joy in the atmosphere. There's going to be somebody set free from alcoholism. There's going to be somebody set free from drug addiction. There's going to be lives put back together. Exodus chapter 
chapter 20, verses 1 through 20, when the law was given, that's when they became a nation. Because you can't be a nation without a law. And then the third part of Exodus begins in Exodus 21. There was a man who was indebted to his lender. The lender said, you've run up a debt that you can't pay. So there was a provision under the law in Exodus 21, 1 through 6. That man that was indebted to the lender would go and join himself to the master of the house. He worked for him for six years and work off his debt. On the seventh year, he could go out free for nothing. Amen. If he got a wife and had children in those seven years, if he chose to leave, his wife and children stayed there in the house. Because you got those blessings because you were in the master's house. But he said, if you choose to stay, there is a provision for you where you can stay. He had to go to the door of the house. The house had to be open door. And the master of the house would take it all. And he would pour his ear out into the door of the house. Thus signifying that your flesh has become a part of the house. And the house has become a part of your flesh. Amen. I am delighting that you belong to me and I belong to you. Your enemies become my enemies and you help me fight my battles as well. Amen. But at this day, amen, everywhere that I go, you go with me. If anybody's at odds with you, they're at odds with me. If anybody's got a problem with you, they've got a problem with me because we are one now. I'm not talking about Old Testament slavery only. I'm talking about New Testament salvation. Whenever you come to church and you commit yourself to God, when you become a part of the house of God, God said your enemies become my enemies. Your hates become my hates. But my wars become your wars. And when I get blessed, you get blessed. And when I want to help you, I'm going to do it. Amen. But you got to be committed to me. I said you got to be committed to me. That word means you need to be obligated to me. It means you need to be responsible to me. It means you need to be dedicated to me. It means you need to be devoted to me. It means that you are committed. Amen. The end commitment message that I'm preaching to you this morning. Amen. As I have done the past several weeks in preaching to you on the fundamental principles of the tenets of our faith. Amen. The first was stewardship. It is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. And a steward is a person in charge of somebody else's goods. What we have today is not ours. It belongs to Jesus. And then the next message is faithful. Because faithfulness is the cardinal virtue of a child of God. Amen. You try to put confidence in an unfaithful man or woman in a time of trouble. It's like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Jesus said, you can't be faithful in a few. How can I make you ruler over many? But if you'll be faithful in a little, I'll make you, I'll make you ruler over many things. Amen. He's been faithful to us, so we ought to be faithful to him. Amen. And then this morning, I'm talking to us about commitment. It means to obligate ourselves to God. I'm obligated to live for God. But my rights and my privileges come from God. They don't come from my governor. They don't come from my mayor. They don't come from my senator or my congressman. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. And those rights are inalienable rights. But one of those rights, amen, that are inalienable, meaning you didn't give it to me, you can't take it from me. That's Number one, number two, I can't even give it up because it's not mine to give up or give away. It's the right to worship God. And that right does not come from a government. It does not come from the amendment, the First Amendment or the Constitution of the United States of America. Your right to go to church is now to you by God Almighty. Your right, your right to sing and shake hands and baptize and worship God. and privileges, but there are duties and obligations. You can't talk about rights and privileges without obeying your duties and obligations. Amen. We're living in a society that is high and big. 
sitting on rights and privileges, but what about your duty and obligation? We want God to bless us. That's a good privilege. But we have a duty and obligation to bless Him first. Don't ask God to bless you if you won't bless Him. Don't ask God to help you if you won't help Him. Don't ask God to show up in the middle of the night and show out for you that you won't sacrifice for Him. Don't Prophecy, but I do know that God always keeps His word. 
You can go back and find it somewhere in the history books. But God is going to keep his word. And if a God that is that committed to his word is that committed to his people, then the least that I can do is say, here I am, Lord. I want to be a willing vessel. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Amen. Psalm chapter 40 and verse number 6. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. My ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. God just wants your time. God wants your person. He doesn't need your abilities. He needs your availabilities. He doesn't need your talent. He just needs your faithfulness and your commitment. He can't use anybody that's not committed. Remember, here's the, here's the next promise. Rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. Rest in the, Lord. Rest. the Bible said that in Isaiah 28 and 12, wherewith I can cause the weary to rest. This is the rest. And this is the refreshing. Amen. Amen. You know how God made Israel rest? After they brought, after they brought 490 years of sabbatical law, God said, I'm going to take you out of the land for 70 years because every seven years, you're supposed to leave the ground alone. Just like you get a seven-day sabbatical, my ground gets a seven-year sabbatical, and you've broken that for 490 years, strip mining the earth of its nutrients. So I'm going to take you out, and I'm going to bring you to the Chaldeans. And they're going to speak to you in a language you don't know. They're going to communicate to you in a, in a way you are unfamiliar with. Another saying, tongue. with another tongue and stammering lip, will I speak to this people. Saying, this is the rest and this is the refreshment. For line must be upon line, upon line, upon line. And precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept. Amen. With stammering lips, I'm going to speak to you. Saying, this is the rest and this is the refreshing. You want to know how to rest in the Lord? Amen. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because peace is not the absence of trouble, but peace is the presence of God. Amen. You have peace in the midst of your storm. Yeah. He gives me peace even when the storm in right. seas are rolling. He gives me peace even when life is, is troublesome. He gives me peace. Does anybody know about the peace I'm preaching about today? Amen. My peace I give unto you. Amen. Here's another promise. Number seven. Wait patiently for him. Wait patiently. In Psalm 37, 7. Rest in him and wait patiently upon him. For they that wait upon the Lord. Isaiah 40 and 31. Shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait on the Lord. Psalm 41, I waited patiently upon the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. And you'll find out, amen, when you're pleased to wait on him, he's anxious to serve you. Cease from anger. That's number eight. Cease from anger. For vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. Depart from evil and do good. Verse 27. This is the nine commandments for commitment. This is the ABCs of living for God. Amen. Committed. Committed. And as God is committed to us, I'm calling on the church today to be as much committed to Him. He said, I have espoused you unto one husband. You are my wife, and I am married to you. And I am in covenant with you. I am committed to you. I am certainly looking out for you. Amen. In this house today, with the problems, as many as they are in our society, in our economy, financial disparities, problems in politics and education, problems on the job and in the family and in the home. You come to this altar today and commit your way to the Lord. You come to see what commitment is. Pure, devoted, dedicated, responsible commitment unto God. 
Come and let the Lord baptize you with a fresh anointing and unction. Come and let the Lord, as you commit fresh, God, I come, I come giving you everything today, Lord. I come to you, Lord. I come committing my way to you, Lord. For your mercy never fails. All my days, I've been here.
so faithful. Not because you've been so good. Thank you.